uh, Matthew chapter number uh, 27. And we're going to read tonight. We're not going to, we're not going to, we're going to digress from our uh, prayer study for just a few minutes uh, or, or for tonight. And then we'll continue that on the next time we meet. Uh, probably next Wednesday night, I think is probably when it is. Uh, yeah, we don't have ch service Sunday night. And we'll, uh, you just keep praying, all right? You just keep praying and see what the Lord will do for us. And uh, before I get there, I've, I knew there was something I was going to mention. You remember the fellow that came here going to Maine that had the five kids and he was going to Maine? Uh, he's going to try, they're going to try to leave in a month. He's, he's already, he's come by uh, to collect boxes for me so that he can get packed up and move. And so he's got uh, a pretty good bit of his support and enough to go on. And he and his family's leaving. And I told him I'd announce it to the church so y'all can pray for him. So pray for Brooke Settles as he goes there to Maine. He's got a place to, uh, uh, to start a church. They're doing a, a big campaign in a couple of, a couple, it's in about three weeks, I think. And they're going to try to knock on uh, uh, 10,000 doors around, around the area and get there, you know, get it out that they're starting a church. So pray that the Lord would bless that and that uh, he'd be able to get a good work started there as a church planner. And then, of course, when he gets a work started, what he'll do is, is start that work, get it in good hands, get it on good, solid spiritual ground, and then he'll move on and start another one. So pray for Brooke Settles. All right, in Matthew chapter number 27, tonight I want to uh, just read to you the story of the crucifixion. Uh, if, if we as Christians, if we look at the crucifixion, uh, I know traditionally Good Friday is the day that Christ, you know, that people look at as the day of crucifixion. However, uh, that doesn't fit in. And my personal belief, and I believe that if, if you just follow out the Jewish holiday, begin, the, the Jewish day begins at sundown. Uh, and it ends, uh, you know, it ends at sundown. It's a 24-hour day that begins at sundown instead of beginning at 12 o'clock at night like ours do. And uh, if, we, if we believe that, if we go that direction, then uh, Christ would have been crucified on Wednesday. About noon on Wednesday, Christ would have been, put, would have been nailed to the cross. And then uh, before sundown, he would, have to be, he would have to be off of the cross because that's when the Jewish... Uh, day began, and that's when the Passover uh, began, and no one could stay on the cross. There couldn't be anyone on the cross. So he would have been, you know, he would have been on Wednesday, Sunday night, Thursday, Wednesday night, Friday, Friday night, and sometime uh, before six o'clock on Saturday is the resurrection of Christ. Now, why do we celebrate Easter on Sunday? Because as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, they came to the tomb, but Christ wasn't there. He had already risen. And so that's why we celebrate Easter Sunday is because we're celebrating uh, not the time that Christ arose, but the time because Christ had risen. And so sometime uh, during the night, Christ arose. He, ca he, came, uh, he came forth out of that grave. Therefore, that puts him in the tomb three days and three nights. So as we read this to you, uh, for what, what reason that would make, it just, it, to me it cuts down on a lot of confusion because people ask me, uh, if Christ was crucified on Friday, how, did he, how was he uh, in the tomb three days and three nights? I cannot answer that. It's not, it's not possible, uh, you know, unless you finagle around hours, meaning 12 hours is a, is a day. And, and, of course, we know that, uh, uh, God created the heavens and earth and, and you know, he created, made creation uh, by the day. Uh, and, and so uh, as we look at that, I, you know, I believe that Christ was crucified on Good Wednesday. Now, if you disagree, that's fine. Uh, that's fine with me. What the important thing is, is that Christ was crucified. And why was he crucified? It was a, a and why call it Good Friday or why call it Good Wednesday? I call it Good Wednesday. Why call it good? Because, friend, I'm telling you why it was good. It, wasn't, it, was, it was good for Christ because he came to do a job and he finished it. But it's good for you and I because the finished work of Calvary uh, makes a way for us to have salvation. Now, friend, that's good. That, that's good. And so that is where the term good comes from. But let me read to you the account tonight, and I want you to put yourself back in that place uh, at the foot of the cross as you, if you were an onlooker. 
and you put yourself there instead of right here, which you are, but in your mind you go back to the place where Christ was crucified. And if you picture that scene and you look up on uh, towards your, depends on which way you're facing, but we say towards your left, and you'll see Golgotha, that, that hill called Calvary, that uh, place of the skull. You'll see that, and it looks like a skull. It's a place of death. And there as you look at that, and you see down along the roadside, you see three crosses that are in the ground. And on that journey to the cross, as we, as we preach to you Sunday morning, Christ steps to the cross, we read these scriptures as we begin in verse number 27. In verse 26, Barabbas was released. He was the one that, and we can say that Jesus took his place. Jesus was a substitute for Barabbas. And, and uh, I've always thought that very interesting, that someone, uh, someone lived and Christ died because Christ took his place. Just as he took my place and your place on Calvary, we weren't murderers maybe, or we weren't thieves maybe, but we were sinners. Just as Barabbas was, we were sinners. And we needed a substitute, a, or else we would face the cross, and we would face the penalty of death, and we would face uh, hell. But Jesus became my substitute on the cross of Calvary. He is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. That's who John saw. John saw him as the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. So as we read this, and you think about it as we read, then released he Barabbas unto them, and when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. Now you put yourself there in the common hall uh, as Jesus is, is, is the part of the crucifixion of Christ. That day is taking place. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had planted a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit upon him, took the reed, and smote him on the head. And after that, they had mocked him. They took the robe off from him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify, to crucify him. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, him they compelled to bear his cross. And when they were coming to a place called Golgotha, that is to say, a, <clears throat> a place of a skull, they gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with gall, and when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. Why would he not take that? Why did they give that to them? What was the, what was the significance of, of giving that to, to Christ? They gave him myrrh mingled with... Uh, <clears throat> They, they gave him uh, myrrh, vinegar to drink mingled with gall, and when he had tasted, he wouldn't drink. Why did they do that? They did that because, uh, because that vinegar and that gall was supposed to take part of the pain away. And Christ, when he tasted it, he knew what it was, and he refused to take that. He refused. Why? Because he was to suffer the full pain of death for you and I. Now, friend, when people look and they, they say that, that's a story that happened 2,000 years ago and surely it's just a story. No, my friend, it's real. It's not a story. It's real. It's a story of history. It's not a made-up story, but it is a factual event that Christ, the things I'm reading to you now, over 2,000 years ago, Christ did while he was on the cross. He was beaten before he came to the cross. He did bear his cross up Calvary's hill. He, he was spit upon and all the things that he was uh, smitten of and all the things that happened, all of these things happened to Christ because of you and because of me. All of these things that we read to you tonight, he did it and, he, and I was on his mind and you were on his mind. So he would not take it because he was to feel the full agony and the, as a man. Remember, Christ was very God, but he was very man. And as Christ being very man in the flesh, he had, the, he had every sense and every feeling that you and I have. And every stripe of that cat of nine tails as it lashed upon his body, he felt every one of them. And every time that hammer drove that nail uh, into, into the uh, palm or the wrist of his hand as he laid there on the cross, every time that hammer hit that nail, Christ 
felt that pain. And friend, he did it for me. He did it for you. And you imagine, you imagine laying down freely and he, that is exactly what he did. They didn't have to fight him. They didn't have to hold him down. He laid his life down for you and I. He stretched his arms out and they drove those nails through his hands and through his feet. And they did that. And as, as, as they did that, he never uttered a word. Why? Because he loved me and he loved you. You say, well, he could have done it without the pain because he was God. But it wasn't that he should do it in that manner. He was to die as a lamb. And you know that lamb that, that, that was slain in the Old Testament, that sacrificial lamb that was slain, you know it felt all the pain. It felt everything that happened. Only Christ felt much worse than that. The death of the lamb in the Old Testament was a quick death. But Christ was an agonizing death. Yet he died as the Lamb of God to take away the sin of the world. I get excited when I begin talking about the cross. I get excited when I begin talking about the sacrifice of the Lamb of God. Why? He did it for me. That's why, friend, because of his sacrifice, I don't have to die and go to hell. So you picture yourself there on, at Calvary that day. You picture yourself there at the foot of the cross. And you see him as he is, as he is nailed to that cross. And so, uh, verse 35, And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. Now, nothing more for them to do than to nail him to the cross and take his clothing because he, let, he hung naked upon the cross. He hung in full shame upon the cross. And as he hung there, how much more shameful for them to take his garments and to, and to uh, gamble over his garments. And, and how, much, how much more shame and more reproach did that bring upon the Son of God? And sitting down, they watched him there. How much more uh, embarrassing, how much more uh, could, you, could you say that could be done to a man? He'd been beaten beyond recognition. There is no artist ever ever painted a picture of the dry, dying cross, a dying Christ on the cross of Calvary. No one. And we see them. I've seen them all my life, and you have too. I have a little trickle of blood running down his hand and a little trickle of blood and a, and a, and a you know, the uh, perfect specimen of a man, you would say, and, and a, little, a little blood coming up. But listen, that wasn't what Christ looked like. To be beaten beyond record. Have you ever seen anyone that you couldn't recognize because they're, they were so, uh, you know, they, they were so disfigured by injury? Well, Christ looked that way. That's how he looked. You looked at him and you say, how could that have ever been alive? How could that have ever been a man? How could that be a human on the cross of Calvary? And friend, all of that, they sat down and they looked at him and they watched him. You say, had they no heart, they didn't care. You say, didn't they, could, could, could they have no feeling, no emotion about them at all? They despised him so and hated him so that that was what they were willing to do, that Christ might be crucified. So sitting down, they watched him there. I've done lost my place. I get, I get excited and get carried away. And, and verse number 37, And set, upon, set up over his head, his accusation written, this is Jesus, the king of the Jews. Then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right and another on the left. And they, and they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads. We see one man in the middle, the Jesus Christ, the son of God, beaten beyond recognition with a crown of thorns upon his head. We see two common criminals, one on the right hand, one on the left hand. They were merely crucified. They were there. They hadn't been, maybe they'd been beaten, but they hadn't been beaten as Christ was beaten. And yet there they hung. You see the picture of Christ in the middle and one thief on the right hand and one thief on the left hand. And you, might, you see his people because this was on a road. And you see his people walk by looking at him, pointing at him, and, and, and saying uh, all the ugly things they could think of to say about him. And they walk by, yeah. Yeah, look at you now. Look at you. You look like you think you were God. You say you were God, but look at you now. You're hanging on that cross. What good is it doing now? All the miracles that we saw you do, you can't even do one for yourself. And they walk by, shaking their hands at the Son of God, shaking their fist at the Lamb of God, and reviling him and talking and saying how all those mean things to him. And what did Jesus do?
do. He hung there as a lamb done before her shears. He, he, he murmured not a word. He opened not his mouth as, as, as he was hanging there on the cross. Why did he do it, friend? You, you're standing there. You're looking at the cross. Why did he do it there? Friend, he'd done it for everyone standing. He'd done it for those that wagged their finger in his face. He'd done it for that man that spit in his face. He'd done it for the two thieves on his, on his right and on his left. Everyone that was there that day, he'd done it for them. But guess what? If we put ourselves back in that spot today around the cross of Calvary, hallelujah, I can see me standing there and the Lamb of God dying for my sins. Oh, what a Savior. And they crucified him there and they walked by and they, and they wagged their heads at him and said, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself if thou be the Son of God. Come down from the cross. Listen, they had forgot. These people were not ignorant to who Christ was. They had saw and they had heard of his miracles. They had saw and they had heard of all the great things that he'd done. But there he's hanging on the cross. And they say, if you think, if you're who you say you are, come down off of that cross, which he could have. Verse number 41, likewise also the chief priests mocking him and the scribes and the elders saved. He saved others. Himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. They didn't believe him then, friend. I'm going to tell you something. If he'd, if he'd gotten off of that cross and came down, they still would not believe who he was. They wouldn't have believed that. And, of course, Christ knew that. Friend, if they, if they would have believed that then, then they would believe in the resurrection now. And the, the same Jewish folks, you know, they, they, they will, you know, they will tell you that Jesus was a man, but they don't believe that he was the Messiah man. And listen, uh, he's, uh, verse 43, he trusted in God, let him deliver him now. If he will have him, for he said, I am the Son of God. He said if he trusted God and he... And he, he he trusted in God, let, him, let God deliver him now, if he will, have him, for he said, I am the Son of God. He said, if God's your Father, let him deliver you now. You said you were his Son. Friend, all the blasphemous things that were said about him. And yet, what did Christ do? He paid my sin debt. He finished the work that he set out to do. The thieves also, which were crucified with him, cast the same in his teeth. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the uh, land unto the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried. Ninth hour being about, uh, I believe it's 3 o'clock, 3 p.m. At, at the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice uh, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. I always have, somebody pronounce that for me. I always have trouble with that, but you can read it and, and, uh, and, and you can pronounce it. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? God turned his back on his own son. And, and but why? Because my sin debt on, on my sin that was being born on, on, on my Savior as he became sin for me, your sin as he bore it for you and I on the cross of Calvary, all the sins of mankind were, were implanted upon one man. The man Christ Jesus. Upon one sacrificial lamb were my sins and your sins and the sins of the entire human race were, were put upon the Lamb of God. And God could not look at that sin. And therefore he, he turned his back on, on Jesus and he hung there in darkness and Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that, that stood there when they heard that said, The... Uh, this man calleth for Elias. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, the rest said, let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Jesus, when he cr had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. He cried with a loud voice. What did he cry? It's, it is finished. What was finished? My sin debt had been paid. The sacrifice had been made. And the Father in heaven said, that's, that's it. That's the sacrifice that will pay the entire sin debt of the human race. The Lamb of God was slain as prophesied in the Old Testament and is shown forth in the New Testament. The Lamb of God was slain on the cross of Calvary and finished the work and paid my sin debt. 
And friend, I'm glad this is not the end of the story. And we'll, we'll see in three days on Sunday morning as we gather together again, we celebrate that that wasn't the end of it. Now, they thought it was the end of it. And we can read on, and I may touch on that maybe Sunday morning. But what happened there, the, the, the law ended and grace began. The law was fulfilled, amen, and the day of grace began when Jesus died on the cross of Calvary. Why, well, how did the law end? He fulfilled the law. That's what he came to do. That's what it took for the sacrifice to be acceptable before God is for the law to be fulfilled. And Jesus came, lived on this earth, fulfilled the law, and when he died on the cross of Calvary, he said it is finished, and he gave up the ghost, fulfilling the law. And then, they, of course, they take him off the cross. They put him in a tomb, a borrowed tomb, by the way, of Joseph. And uh, because uh, I believe Joseph knew that he wasn't going to, Jesus wasn't going to need it long. So he said, just use mine. It's going, I believe what you said about coming, uh, coming forth out of the grave. So just use mine. And, friend, I've been there, and I've saw that tomb. And I've been in there, and they've never found a trace of human uh, in there. So nobody's ever been buried. I don't know what happened to Joseph. I, maybe he thought that was such a sacred place, he wasn't going to be buried in it. But no, they've never found any trace of human remains in that tomb. Why? He's not there. He's risen. I'll preach that to you Sunday, Lord help us. But you remember, between now and Sunday, you think on this. On that cross of Calvary, that place of such torture, that place of such shame, Jesus paid it all. Father, we thank you for the word of God tonight. God, help us to understand, God, that you died for us. God, you give your life for us. And Lord, the, the, the sacrifice was completed. And Father, just in a few days, God, we'll celebrate, Lord, the resurrection of Christ that completed the gospel. And, Lord, we'll thank you and praise you. Help us, Lord, to remember these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your attention.